Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits here, and this is part one of our video series on creating a point-and-click adventure in Unity. If you'd like a brief overview of what this series is all about, feel free to check out our intro video that precedes this one. Otherwise, let's dive in and get started with Unity. So we're just going to open up the program here, and we're going to start a new project. I'm going to name it Point and Click, and we're going to keep it as 3D. Create project. Now, if you're really familiar with Unity and you know um, game objects really well and creating primitives and all that sort of stuff, feel free. I'm just going to be making a room here, so feel free to make your own. Um, one thing I would recommend is any object that you're going to want to be able to interact with. For example, if you've got like props on a table or even the table like that you might be walking up to, um, put those into a parent game object, each of them into their own parent game object, and you'll see why in the next video. But other than that, feel free to go ahead and make, um, make your own scene as you'd like. But I am going to walk through this basically so that if someone is new to Unity and wants to you know, create a quick room, here's one way to do it. So as we're started here, we have our full um, 3D scene view, as well as our game view, which is minimized right now, but that is absolutely fine for our purposes. And to start, we're actually going to create an empty game object, and we're going to call this Room. And the reason we're doing this is because Unity doesn't really create a folder system within your scenes, so the best way to kind of keep your hierarchy organized here is to create some empty game objects that can store things. And in this case, this is going to store all of our, our floor, our walls, our props, anything that's going to be in this room. We're going to know we can just go to this object and it'll be somewhere in here. We are also going to create a um, quick second game object, empty as well. And this one we're going to call structure. And we're actually going to child this by dragging it onto the room here, to the room. And this is going to be what's going to hold our floor, our walls, anything that's not really interactive but still needs to be in the room. And now we can actually start making the primitives that will make up the room itself. So you can right click on structure because this is going to be child, the floor we're going to make first is going to be childed to the structure. And so we'll go 3D object, plane, and that creates this plane for us. Now we want to make sure that the plane is at 0, 0, 0. And actually you should probably make sure that your transforms for your room and your structure are also at 0, 0, 0. Sometimes if you shift your view around these will change. And if you're using this sort of a, quote, folder structure, it's good to have all of them at the origin, just so that you don't have these like floating points out in space that you'll suddenly might see a gizmo and you don't really know why it's there. So our plane can be right at the origin as well, zero, zero, zero. Uh, and we're gonna actually expand its size a little bit. We're going to expand it on the X and the, y, and the Z, sorry, to two, two times the size. So we're gonna have a nice big room to work with. Uh, the Y we can keep as one because the plane is literally a flat plane, so there is no, um, there's no depth to it in that dimension. So we have that, and now we can rename this. Or you can either rename it up here um, in the inspector, but just be sure when you do this to hit enter afterward, otherwise it won't record it. Um, or you can double click on the element in the hierarchy or give it a single click and a pause and it will uh, come up with the editable field. And we're going to name that floor. And now we're going to actually duplicate this once. And this is going to be our first wall. And we're going to call this the back wall. Um, you could call it you know, north, south, east, west, or whatever you want. I'm just using back because it's easy for me at the moment. And what that's going to be is, if we look at our scene a little closer here, we see that we've got our camera here. If we click on our camera up here, we can see where the camera is pointing, and we see that it's pointing in this direction. So this is going to be our back wall. So what we want is for what we have our we have right now our two floors basically facing up. We're going to rotate this on the x-axis 
so that it is pointing perfectly straight up. And I happen to get it right there, although we don't want this to be zero and negative 360. Um, that's one of the dangers of using Euler angles. But so we want it at negative 90. So now this is pointing directly straight up as a wall. If we um, rotate our view here a little bit, we see it there. Uh, we don't need it that tall though, so we can actually drop the Z back down to one. And we can push the wall back to about, we'll say nine, nine units, which is not quite all the way to the edge of this floor, but pretty close and um, it'll work fine for our purposes. And now we're just gonna quickly duplicate this and we're gonna make the front wall. And we're gonna just simply do that by turning this around 180 degrees, so negative 90 can just become 90. And then we can make, instead of nine, it be negative nine. And as we see here, that moves the wall to make the opposite wall there. Now we can just actually duplicate these. And that creates two more walls for us. And if you set your, uh, pivot to the center here, you'll see that you'll be directly centered between the two of them. And so what we can do is take the uh, y, well it's technically the z-axis because of, here we'll do that. Now it's the y-axis again, so it's global. So make your, um, make your pivot centered and global. And so now you see that this around here is the y because you're going around the y-axis. And we can just turn this, and if we hold control, Actually, we're going to control Z that. If you hold control and then turn on that axis, you're going to turn at exactly um, 90 degree, or exact degrees of um, difference. I believe it's 15 degree increments. So we're going to turn that exactly 90 degrees and we're going to let go. And so now we have all four of our walls although these two are not correctly named. So if we click on this one, we know that this is now our left wall. And we click on this one, that's our right wall. I'll get it into view a little bit more there. And so that's our structure. This is what the room is made of. Our next step, now that we have our room created, is we're going to add some props to the room. We're going to add a table and a couple of objects that are going to sit on the table. And for each of these objects, when they're interactable like this, and I mean that means as simple as that you can walk up to the table or that you can actually look at and interact with the objects on the table, we're going to want to put them in an empty game object as well. And there's a couple reasons for this. One is a matter of positioning. It's actually a lot easier to position something um, with, its, with its pivot on its base. And when you create a primitive in Unity, I'll show you here actually, We'll create a cube, um, and we'll reset its transform so it's back to zero, zero, zero. You see how it gets like embedded in the floor here. And the reason for that is that its pivot is right at the center. Even if we go to its normal pivot, it's right at the center of this cube. What would be a lot better is if we had a pivot at the very bottom of the cube. So, it, so that when we had it at zero, 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 it would be sitting on the floor. So that's one thing that's gonna let us do. So let's actually do that right now. We're gonna create an empty, and we're gonna call this table. And we're going to reset its transform to zero, zero, zero. And then this cube is actually gonna be the table's model. So we'll call it that, table model. And we're going to, we're gonna reset it as well. And we're gonna make it a child of this. And now when we look here, we see that the table its scale is 1, 1, 1, which actually corresponds to one unit high, one unit um, wide, and one unit deep. So in order to make it sit on the floor, we needed to just move up half of its height. So we'll just say 0.5. And now we see here that it is sitting right on the floor. If we get down to its level, we see it's right on the floor there. So now that we have that set up properly, um, we can also now scale this, and this is the other reason that we put it inside of a parent object. If we were to just have this table model and then we started scaling it to size, it would affect the, um, the scale of everything else that's childed to it, and that can lead to some really funky math that you don't want to have to deal with. 
So instead, we're just going to um, scale our table model, and then everything else will remain independent. As we see here, the table um, game object is still at 111. The model is what has changed. So that's our um, table. And now we'll just quickly add a couple more game objects here. We're going to create uh, another empty, where we'll call it cube, we'll call it blue cube. You'll see why soon. And we're going to create another empty game object and call it red. Oh, we're not going to call it anything if we don't do red sphere. And you'll see here now that these uh, transforms are not at 0, 0, 0 because we've moved our view. So for both of these, we're just going to right click and hit reset. So they're both at 0, 0, 0 again. Now what we can do is we're going to, for our blue cube, we're going to create a 3D object, create a cube, and again, we will um, scale this up a bit. Now that I'm looking, though, we see here that the table is kind of obstructing our view, so we can do one of a couple things. I'm going to move the table out of the way now, and now when you're moving the table, you want to move it and rotate it with the parent. So we'll take the parent, and, you'll, and the table will move with it. And now our cube, we can pull up, um, again, we know the exact number, but we're actually going to change the size of this. This would be very big on our table right now. It would take up about half the table. So we'll make it, say, about uh, 0.4, uh, 0 0.4 wide and high, and then maybe 0.6 deep. So it's kind of in a little along, almost like a shoebox size. And then now we can move this up. So we'll, we only need to move it up half the height, though, similar to the table, so just 0.2. And so now we see that this is, um, again, right on the surface. Now we can actually move it up onto the table. And doing that is pretty easy because what we can do is just drag this now into the table model, or not into the, sorry, into the table parent object, and it becomes a sibling of the table model. And what we can do is we can just move this back to 0, 0, 0, but then we just want to move it up to the height of the table, so we just move it Y1. And so now we move over here, we can see that the box is on the table. We're going to do the same thing with our sphere. Just got the empty object at 0, 0, game object, sphere. Uh, we'll scale this down to about uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Move it up 0 0.25. And we'll make that a child of that red sphere. And now we'll drop that onto the table as well. Put it at 0, 0, 0. Move it up to 1. Now these are obviously sharing space here, so we can actually just move these both on the X axis, so they're to either side of the table. So I'll just move the red sphere to 0.5 and the cube to, 0 point, to negative 0.5. Again, remember we're moving the cube parent object, not the model, which actually I should rename these to cube model and sphere model for that purpose too. Helps to always keep track of what you are, um, what you're clicking on and which thing you're using. So again, models are good for scaling um, and just positioning so that they are at the base where they should be. And um, the transforms are what you really want to use for both positioning and for rotation. Say we want to move our cube and rotate it so that it's a little bit off kilter on the table. Now it's in that position, but you notice the cube model is still at zero, zero, zero. Okay. Let's save our scene, just call it room, and that'll appear in assets. And the last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to add some materials to our scene because right now it's tough to see where everything is, particularly when you get, um, particularly in the scene view, but also even in with the shading in the game view, it's pretty tricky to tell what's where. So we're going to create a folder in our assets, call it materials, and we're going to quickly open that up and create a new material. We're going to call this first one room and we're going to just make that sort of a gray color. 
and we're going to drop the smoothness down to zero. What smoothness does um, in a nutshell is it kind of creates this shininess to an object and depending on like if you want an object that looks very metallic smoothness can help it look even more so but this is just going to be kind of like if we were painting um, painting our walls with just you know a, a matte paint a gray matte paint so we'll put that there now there's a couple ways you can add materials to objects one is you can just drag it right on to the um, the object in your scene view and so we can do that for a couple of these here but you'll notice we can't quite get the uh, the right wall or the back wall that we have or the front wall I should say that we have so for those we need to go into our structure and we can drag it right onto those in the hierarchy so if you go front wall and then you'll see with the right wall that changed color at that last moment there so that's the color for that we can quickly duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate it four times and I'm going to rename these. The first one's going to be table and then I'm going to name these color red not with a capital E um, color green and color blue. I bet you can guess why. I'm going to make each of these, these are just going to be so that we can kind of tell what the um, what the different objects are and really differentiate between them. For green, we'll make this a full green. For red, same idea. 100% red. And then the table, we'll make like a brown color, kind of a, pretend it's wood. You could obviously make it very realistic and add in textures and uh, normal maps and all of that good stuff, but we're just going to go for a brown color. And now these we can just add right to our table. We'll add that brown, and then we'll make our cube blue and our sphere red. So that is really the basics. I'm going to zoom out here of our initial scene. We've got uh, our four walls, we've got our floor, and then we've got a simple table. Um, with its model and then the cube that sits on the table with its model and the sphere on its model. We can actually drag all of these right into the room because they are a part of the room um, but they are not like I say a part of the structure that's why we're keeping that separate. So in our next video we're going to actually look at how we're going to make um, our nodes out of each of these objects so that we can have the camera move to them um, and interact with them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.